guys ready for the best goddamn night of your lives or what? It's for Brian Redman. We're hey, here, everybody. We're doing this shit. Fucking look at this setup. We are here at Skankfest in Las Vegas. It's beautiful. It's a real fucking Skankfest. You could tell. Look at all the people. There's a guy with a fucking tattoo head right there. Look at that. Just a normal old fat guy with a tattoo on his head. We got a fucking fat guy with beard, fat guy with baseball cap. Face tattoos for sure. Actually, I actually know him. How about a hand for my friend Ty Rivera, everybody? That's the kind of party that we're at. One second you're making, very, making fun of a guy for having face tattoos, and then you're like, ah, oh, I've been friends with him for 16 years. That's, this is life. This is Skank Fest. I'm excited to be here. We're going to have a lot of fun tonight. This show, believe it or not, is indeed brought to you by the Red Rose and the Yellow Rose, the two best strip clubs on planet Earth. Just so happen to be in Austin, Texas, as is Deep Eddie Vodka, one of the best goddamn vodkas on planet Earth. I mean, if you drink vodka, you might as well drink Deep Eddie. And if you like whiskey and or peanut butter, may I recommend Screwball Peanut Butter Whiskey? Just, I mean, why not? two great things, you can't go wrong, mix them together, do anything you want. Buy it, pour it out into the toilet. I don't give a fuck. Just buy it, buy it, and then buy it again. They're great to us. They represent us well. We're going to have a lot of fun. Here's the rest of the sponsors that made tonight's episode available for you here right now. Hey, y'all. You might not know this, but when I'm not being the host of the number one live podcast in the world, what I've been doing for the last 16 years is being a professional stand-up comedian, and I'm excited to say that I'm back out on tour again. November 4th and 5th, New York, New York. December 9th and 10th, I'll be performing in Arlington, Texas. January 13th and 14th of 2023, I'm in Dallas, Texas. And February 9th and 10th of 2023, I'm in Houston, Texas. Tickets available at TonyHinchcliffe.com. All these shows sell out, so don't be a doofus. Go to the website now. Get tickets while you still can. Are you guys ready to start this episode or what? I'm telling you, I don't know if you guys know this, we live in Austin, Texas now, and every single week the crowds are hot as fuck. I mean, it's unbelievable, and much, much, much hotter than that response was. So I'm going to ask you, Vegas, Skankfest, are you ready to start tonight's episode? There you go. Your guests tonight, I'm going to bring up two out of the three right now. Make some noise for two guys that I consider two of the best guests of this show in the history of the show. For those of you that are fans of this show, you will know that I am being honest when I say it. Make some noise for the great Eric Griffin and Ian Fidance. Eric Griffin. Hello. I work well with silly fucks, and these are two of my favorite silly fucks on planet. Yeah. This, this, yes. this is our first time meeting. I, this looks like a before and after right now. Yeah, wow. Yes, before and after, yo, Kratom. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. You guys, but Ian has the record for appearances in the year 2022 on hey. the show. This is his oh. third appearance thank you he had his first appearance three months ago he's been on twice fucking since then thank a goddamn so much, freaky Tony. little machine we have a lot of fun every time he visits texas fucking same thing with eric griffin lots of surprises this episode for you guys because i love all of you i like real fucking comedy fans i take great pride in the fact that uh the people that get it get this show so we're gonna have fun you guys know how it works a ton of people signed up for the opportunity to do 60 seconds on this stage there's also some loose sharpie markers in here just in case but it, you know how it works they get 60 seconds uninterrupted you know their time is up and you hear the sound of a kitten that means they have to wrap it up then or else they bring out the angry Fremont Street bear Homo that here band. he is, right uh, here. Yeah, exactly. Live in right the front. Right in the front. Wow. There's like 45 of them in this room right now. 
We're gonna have a lot of fun here tonight. There's only one way to start a show like this, though. You know, I could easily go to the bucket, and we could take a massive risk of not building any momentum whatsoever. Or I could bring up one of the most exciting regulars of all time. I just spent the entire week with this fucking guy. We did. 10 sold out shows in Philly and Boston. We got on an Woo! airplane in Boston Woo! this morning at 7 a.m. to be here with you. Yes! Here yes! with a brand new minute to get things started. Ladies and gentlemen, sing along if you know the words. This is Hans Kim. <laughs> show red band very good what's great is i literally asked four skank fest staff members to make sure that hans kim was here right <laughs> five minutes into the show so that's oh, they could, great. i think they grabbed a random asian guy <laughs> yeah well we know that never works out well for me uh, but hopefully it's not I can only work with Hans Kim. It's in we have a surprise for you. He's here now. Ladies Come and on gentlemen, <laughs> one of the least professional professionals in show business, this is Hans Kim, everybody. What the fuck is up, Skankfest? Good to be here. I love Skankfest because I can say the F word here. Yeah. Female. My sex story is getting a little confusing in California. Everyone thinks a dude fucked my pussy. Um, but yeah, I'm a lot taller than a lot of people think I am, because uh, I'm Asian-American. Emphasis on the American. I grew up on high fructose corn syrup and xanthan gum. They're like, I don't think there's health care here. Give him three more extra inches. Take it up his IQ. But uh, yeah, I love uh, Skankfest. I saw a woman in a full burqa, which kind of freaked me out, because she could be wearing a mask and be a liberal, and I'd have no idea. <laughs> but uh, good to be here at Skankfest. I think it's funny that uh, Tony makes fun of me so much. You know, sometimes he calls me the F word. And uh, it really hurts my feelings. That's why I carry a headphone around with me. And every time he makes fun of me, I put it on and listen to Kill Tony. <laughs> my portable Tony Hinchcliffe loves me all the time. <laughs> Thank you, guys. What? I didn't get that last one. What are you saying that I call you? A female. <laughs> oh, okay. Uh, what? <laughs> Hans, are you okay right now? <laughs> Yeah, What's I'm happening? Like, well, what are, you, are you implying that I call you... Uh, hurtful names? Hurtful names. Is yeah. that true? Do I really do that? This is a fucking awkward as shit. <laughs> do I really do that? Or are you trying to like paint a picture of like a brand or something like that? <laughs> I mean, well, I think we know with that set, the F word that you don't call him is funny. <laughs> um, <laughs> <laughs> Ouch! <laughs> why, 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 why? I'm kidding. <laughs> Look, okay, at the, look at the wheels turning on this fucking guy's... Uh... I'm kidding. I'm, I was trying to save the artwork. I love home. you. You're a great faggot. <laughs> there you go. There's the hot, word you... Hot, 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 oh, no. Hot, no, hot, no, 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 no. I'm, I'm, I don't know if you know this. I'm, this is the only show where I encourage you not to chant. <laughs> Again, all the other podcasts, they need to fill time. They don't have a format. They never took the time to build one. So they literally are hoping that you guys will fill the time. But... Hey, I think we take that personal. <laughs> <laughs> oh, sorry, guys. Uh, I know you guys are four years into your podcast. So, uh, <laughs> Please don't insult me and my father again. <laughs> okay. Oh, you, I'm older than you, motherfucker? <laughs> Hans Kim, you must love this backdrop, reminding you of South Korea all over again. This is exciting. Feels like home. Yeah, this is great. This is almost as flaming as Ian Fidance. <laughs> Ooh, you said he wasn't funny. He's got his, his wheels are turning like a rickshaw right now. Yeah, this is. kitten has crawls. <laughs> 
You bring dishonor to me. Hans Kim oh, just now he got it. super Asian all of a sudden. <laughs> Hans, you think? Let me ask you a question. Black what Adam is coming out this weekend. Do you think there'll ever be an Asian superhero? Yeah, yellow uh, Ali Wong. Oh wow. Okie dokie, that was almost uh, all right. Oh, and Jeez. Hans Kim, everybody. <laughs> yeah, Hans, Hans a little bit jittery today. I don't think he's used to six-hour plane rides and then having to think quick on his feet, this fucking yeah. kid. He was in Boston this morning. It was great. Yeah, tell the yeah. audience. But Boston was great. Uh... <laughs> Jesus Christ. <laughs> Did someone give you something? Hans doesn't say no to drugs at all, by the way. So there's a good chance that somebody handed Hans anything at all. He might be on fentanyl right now. <laughs> um, actually, I'm doing Sober October, which was hard, because I was on tour with t you, Tony. Right. And you kept threatening me. You were like, I'm going to kick you off the tour. You're so boring. Yeah, it was. It was boring as fuck. I spent the whole fucking week with Hans and William. William obviously been sober for two years. Hans deciding to hang it up because he wants to get closer with Rogan. <laughs> How's that going? <laughs> <laughs> it's going good. He's a, he's a good man. Uh, As you could tell by the Rolex on his wrist, it's going pretty good for Hans. Uh, <laughs> ah! Sweet, sweet. Oh, we, we have Joe. He's in right now. Joe Rogan calling in live from Austin, Texas. Uh, Joe, what do you think about the, uh, the Legion of Skanks guys? They're frauds. Oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. That Joe! Incredible. Uh, wow. What is your favorite thing, uh, in the, uh, Skankfest universe? I love hemp protein. It's one of my favorite proteins oh. for... We sell it on it. We sell hemp protein. <laughs> Okie dokie, uh... Wow. And how about the backdrop? What do you think of the backdrop, Joe? It's the end of the world. Wow. Very good. All right. Hans, uh, any parting words before we let you go on this first show? Anything you want to tell these beautiful, beautiful, ugly people here at Skankfest? <laughs> I love you guys. Uh, please don't give me drugs because I'll probably do them. Um, and uh, yeah, don't make fun of me I, it, it hurts my feelings <laughs> what happened what a faggot am I right what the hell is going on you know what I just realized yeah. he's got a bigger Adam's apple than you oh <laughs> what's going on I, there bro I don't know what that is <laughs> I mean, that, fucking, that might be an egg roll stuck in his throat you know what I'm saying it's Joe Rogan's come. Okay, there you go. A little self-deprecation oh. there from Hans, who's a little bit wibbly wobbly. Ah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that made the whole crowd go, ooh. Joe, if you had to describe Hans's Adam's apple, how would, what would you call that? Whenever I see someone who's oh, angry. Oh, okay, forget it. <laughs> <laughs> he tried. Uh, do we have one of him just saying the N-word for three minutes in a row? Yeah. <laughs> All right. On YouTube. Um, Hans, we love you. You're a star. I hope you get hydrated. Go have a liquid IV and uh, get ready for the 9 p.m. show, okay? okay Hans Tony. Kim, everybody. There Thank he goes. Guys. He's a sweet boy. He tried a premise. I don't know. I don't know what that was. He I don't know what nervous. that was. He might be nervous. Absolutely destroyed ten times throughout the week in Philly and Boston. Comes here for one minute set. It's like, Tony calls me the F word. Did something happen? Not even at all. That's what's crazy. He's like trying, sometimes he does that though. He's done that a couple times. Like, Tony was mean to me. Because he thinks that it's like on brand. Because I, I mean to people. I mean. <laughs> I mean. <laughs> All right, I'm going to the bucket. You guys ready to see some crazy shit? Now, let me yeah, just tell yeah, you. Yeah. I've been doing yeah. this a long time. We do it every week in our home. We've been all around the world. Let me just warn you guys. Skankfest has an unbelievable reputation of having people that did not prepare a minute, that literally are comedy fans, that thought they were going to riff and that it was going to go good, and we hate that here. Uh, so it might happen a lot. It usually does. Let's see what happens. Your first comedian out of the bucket. Remind you all that you have 
to, no matter where you are in this building right now, you can only come up via that staircase. If you come up any other way, they're going to take you off the stage. So it's the only way up. Everything else is a fire hazard. Your first comedian is Warren D.K. Warren D.K. Out of the bucket. Anything can happen. It could be a new legend of the history of the show. Could be a first timer. Yeah. This is Warren D.K. Put your hands together for Warren. Be supportive. What's up, motherfuckers? All right, I'm self-employed now. I work from home. I'm my own boss. It's awesome. Because unlike my last job, I can't get fired for jacking off at my desk. <laughs> Apparently, that's offensive to the students. <laughs> Third graders, am I right? Bunch of prudes. <laughs> Super sexy, though. I was, uh, I was jacking off the other day and I accidentally came in my own eyeball. All right, it was an accident. Mistakes happen. Yeah, I was aiming for my mouth and I missed. I know what you're thinking too. Like, how did I not see that coming? I did. Hey. Oma? <laughs> uh, I'm, I, I, believe it or not, I am in a, in a relationship. Uh, I got a beautiful girlfriend. She's, a, she's what's known as a screamer. Very loud, very loud during sex. I don't know if you guys have ever busted a nut and an eardrum at the same time. Very painful. Very rad. All right, Warren D. K. Wow, big pop from the crowd on that one. Yeah. Skankfest crowds love uh, masturbation jokes, followed by you talking about an imaginary girlfriend that doesn't exist. <laughs> 48 seconds of material about oh, the jacking cat. off, and then you checked your watch to know that you had 13 <laughs> seconds left and then talked about your made-up girlfriend. Um, Warren DK, welcome to the show. How are you? I'm great, Tony. Thank you. Absolutely. How long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, I've done like a handful of shows over the last 10 years. Everything you do is a handful, huh? Yeah, 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 yeah. The jerk-off king of comedy, Warren DK. Just a, just a couple fingerful. Incredible. All right. Ten, Wait, what's that? Past 10 years? Yeah, I, I did my first open mic when I was like 21. I'm 33. So. Holy uh -huh. shit. So you've done it a hand, you do it like once every three yeah, years? Yeah, I, I, I do random open mics here and there. Okay, why? I don't know. I like it. It's fun. <laughs> but it's not fun enough to do more often than once every few years? <laughs> uh, honestly, I'm just lazy and terrified of failure, so. Okay. Jesus. Well, I could see why. <laughs> I like how that hit with everybody in this room. <laughs> yeah. Everybody in this room just went, oh, <laughs> I totally know what he means. <laughs> Warren DK, you have a very interesting, uh, methy feature to you. Like, very, very, very light on your feet. You look like a... Uh, your sandwich, motherfucker. Yeah. Uh, I have Crohn's disease. So. Is that what it is? Yeah, yeah. Oh, if you guys boo -boo. know what Crohn's disease is, it's, uh, it's basically just wow. constant diarrhea. Damn, this is what his toilet looks like every time. Uh... <laughs> All right. Constant diarrhea, huh? Now, what, what, why do you think you ended up getting Crohn's? Did you do something bad when you were a kid or something like that? Like, do you uh, think it's karma? <laughs> Did you, like, kill a baby bird or something like that? <laughs> Uh, it's it's hereditary. My dad was a piece of shit, so. Oh Jesus, buddy! <laughs> wow. Once again, you're hitting home. <laughs> yeah. In this crowd, dude. <laughs> your dad was your dad really a piece of shit? Not Isn't it dark. funny that Crohn's disease you don't really ever see a piece of shit? It's all liquid. <laughs> Ironic, isn't it? That being a piece of shit means all right. In what way was your dad a piece of shit? Normally, people with piece of shit dads are a lot funnier than you, by the way. Aww, 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 so you're... aww, skank fest, did that one make you sad? Oh, we're so tough, we wear black t-shirts and grow out our beards. Aww, he said he's dead. Blah, 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 blah. Fucking homos. You guys are gayer than Hans Kim, you know that? <laughs> Jesus fucking Christ. So you, you said that your dad, you have Crohn's and your dad has Crohn's. So My dad's got, dead, but... Yeah. You got dad's that dead? Yeah. yeah. Oh, shit. Jesus, dude. <laughs> it's, it's Come on, anybody having a good time yet? All right, man, we get it. You're sad. Jesus Christ. <laughs> 
Does your dad also have a nose like a sundial? Did you get that from him? That, that really is a curse, to have a nose that big and constantly have diarrhea. I mean, what are the odds? Yeah. I feel like you're in a very negative place. Give us something that's positive about your life. No, that, that, uh, it is true. I do have a girlfriend. I'm, that's the... Okay. Oh, yeah? <laughs> Does she go to a different Holocaust camp? <laughs> you look like a survivor. <laughs> it is true. Very... She is also a Nazi, yeah. <laughs> okay. All right, Warren. What do you do for a living? Where are you from? Uh, I live in uh, Houston currently. Houston, what do you do for work? Uh, woodworking, carpentry. Oh, nice. Uh, bartend, I do a bunch of stuff. I volunteer with a really cool program out in Texas called the TRP. We build ramps for disabled people that can't afford them. Oh, wow. Well, we could have really used you when Michael Lair was on the show. Uh, <laughs> we had a lot of trouble. We, had a, we have a high stage at Vulcan. All right. <laughs> I liked his first joke. That was fun, like the Mr. X about the kids, and then like you got the laugh, and you like really drove it home, and everyone got like weirded out. I've actually never told any of those jokes, so I appreciate those. Oh, we can tell. Yeah. 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 <laughs> <laughs> or DK. Yeah. When's the last time you performed? Oh, shit, I can't remember. Probably like a year ago. I signed up for your show a couple times in Austin, but I uh, never gotten pulled. Um, I did an open mic out there maybe like six months ago. Okay. Tell us the craziest thing about your life. What do you think sets you apart from everybody else in this room? Uh, I can fuck my own ass. I can shove my own dick in my own asshole. Wow. How many of you think we should have him do that right now? I mean... Oh. Yeah. Humble brag. You know yeah. what I mean? I don't think we can do that, but... Yeah. I'll show you later, Tony. I know you're at. Thank you. Piqued your interest there. Thank you, Warren DK. Your obligatory wow. Tony Hinchcliffe gay joke there. That's all I get it out. I feel like that's his street trick on Fremont Street to get money. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it, it is interesting. So you take your own flaccid penis. Yeah, it's right? got to be flaccid. Right. But... Oh, you think? <laughs> <laughs> and then when it gets into your ass, does it start to get hard? Yeah, yeah. Okay, there you go. Queer. <laughs> Depends if I clench or not, you know? Wow. Yeah, so like, After he has diarrhea, he puts it back there. He's like, oh my God, you're so wet. <laughs> how did you, how did you <laughs> learn that? Did you do it as like to cork it up so the diarrhea would not come out? Like, how did you figure this out? Uh, it's like, you got a wet boy pussy. <laughs> I, I saw a guy in YMH who can shove his balls in his ass. So I tried that, and I have really tiny balls. It didn't work. So oh, I went tiny to the balls. Look at you. So you're just all dick. I'm That's what you're saying. Long dick, tiny balls. Right. All right. Wet ass. Wet ass. <laughs> yeah, a wet ass. A wet, a wet ass bussy. Yeah. <laughs> he just he listens to the song up until the pussy part, and then he stops it. it it's just wah. <laughs> Cause he got a wet ass ass. <laughs> <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, that is the Kill Tony debut of Warren DK, everyone. Back to the bucket we go. Here, hey, Warren, turn around. Here's a little joke book for you. Shove it up your ass. There you go. Warren DK, everyone. Come on. Give him a hand. I love it. We're gonna fucking go back to this bucket. You guys having fun yet? You understand how the show works? There's your perfect example of the Skankfest bucket pool. The guy's done stand-up four times in 13 years, so that's very exciting. Okay, this looks like a new name. Put your hands together for Corey Duga. Corey Duga. Here on Kill Tony. Come on, people, make some noise. It could be somebody's first time. Could be a real pro. Anything can happen. One more time for Corey, everybody. Sup, Skanks? First time caller, first time uh, on, first time on a stage. My bad. Uh, I was expecting to feel a little good about myself coming to my first gang fest, but looking at some of you guys, you put me in my place. I tell you, I uh, I had a couple of conversations where I uh, thought I was gonna have the upper hand. Oh yeah, I look better than this guy, feeling myself, but uh, they let me know. Oh no, I make more money than you. <laughs> That's the, that's the equalizer. Damn it, I need to start making more money. Freaking, I'm not tall enough, so that's not gonna, I'm not gonna get a girl that way. So. 
Anyway, I appreciate you. Appreciate you. Show your dick. <laughs> I wish I could, man. But, uh... quiet, bitch. <laughs> Guys, we don't heckle at this show, you fucking pussies. If you had the courage to sign up, then you wait your turn. If you didn't, you shut the fuck up. You don't break the tension in this show. Unfortunately for you, Corey, I'm going to add another 15 seconds to your set because you got rudely interrupted. I'm pretty sure you have nothing left to say anyway, but I'm still, I want you to feel the silence that you deserved up there. So 15 seconds extended from me to Corey. Here we go. I don't think you understand what the fuck I just said, so very funny. Okay, Corey, do something. Wish I had more to say. Uh, I uh, I thought I had a good voice, but apparently I can't even freaking project. My bad, bro. My bad. Fucking. Uh, sometimes I, I I get a lot of phone calls at my job, so I answer. Okay. Did you have something? Were you just starting a sentence, hoping for 15 seconds to be? You know what? Okay. In, in hindsight, yeah, it was a sentence. I love it, Corey. Welcome to the show. That was fucking horrible. Welcome. But how about a hand? It's his first time doing it. Oh my! Hopefully, his last time doing it as well. Uh, Corey, welcome. Where are you from? La Puente, California. That's L.A. County. You really gotta, you gotta put the mic. Up. L.A. County, my bad. L.A. County. Now yes. that's an interesting answer. Uh, where, what part of the county exactly? Like uh, as freaking close as you could get to San Bernardino before it's not L.A. anymore. Okay. Okay. It's kind of it, It's kind of like a lot of brown over there. It's. Mm, yes, I know. Yeah. Um, I lived there for a very long time and went there to work and then immediately drove as fast as I could back to where I live, <laughs> in West Hollywood, with the rich, gay whites. I've, I've never seen a sad cholo. That was, yeah, it really is incredible. I mean, this was an episode of MS-13 Reasons Why. <laughs> <laughs> A sad cholo. He doesn't have a teardrop tattoo. He has the real thing. <laughs> Why do you think you're such a sad cholo, Corey Duga? I got a little dig, man. <laughs> it can't even fit to my asshole. I don't even have what the last guy had. My ass is always dry, like my sense of humor. <laughs> yeah, no. It, for, all that's true. <laughs> Is this the hardest thing you've ever done? Like, I feel like this I is like you're struggling right now, well, even to be I mean, there. The the nerves really work freaking up when you when Tony tells you to not sign up if you're not prepared, don't do it. <laughs> it well, unfortunately, I say that after the bucket's filled with names, so we have a little bit of tweaking to do I've, before the 9 I've p.m. Been... show. To literally, the people that help with the sign-ups can say like, "Yo, the... if you are literally just <laughs> gonna go up there to bomb." Yep. But this is the thing. <laughs> I apologize. I apologize. Okay, Corey, let's talk about your fucking life. Let's figure it out. What do you do for work? I am a security guard. You are a security guard. Where are you a security guard at? Places that only people the size of the last comedian go? It's like, no. oh, I don't want to fuck with that guy. <laughs> no, you can't even hear him. <laughs> Stop what you're doing. Stop. <laughs> Get away from that. <laughs> hey, man, you steal something, I'm gonna kill myself, Esse. <laughs> She's no joke, man. <laughs> no, for real. Oh, man. Corey, where are you a security guard at? I work, uh... Louder, I... you son of a bitch! <clears throat> you are the most quiet Latino I've ever heard in my life. How come, how come none of the Latinos I ever lived in an apartment building with are this quiet? <laughs> Jesus Christ! Where's my inner anger when I need it? I'm telling you. Because I have two modes. It's sad and angry. That's it. Okay. Yeah, but, uh, I'm either joker mode or loco mode. <laughs> <laughs> you don't want to see me when I loco. You, you're just going to your bag of Latino shit right now, huh? <laughs> oh, yeah. You're like, finally! <laughs> Woo! I love He's a security it. guard at a monastery. You know what I mean? <laughs> That, where would, be a, that would be a smooth game. Where I, is that? Yeah. Uh, 
I work for a Fortune 500 company, like the their uh, their oh. campus, their biz, their business campus. I work for them. Oh. Okay. Oh. How big of a family do you have? I just live with my mom and dad. You live oh. with your mom and dad. How old are you? How old are you? you know. <laughs> I am. I am recently 32. Recently right. 32. Okay. Well, you're saving money. I don't know. I'm trying to. <laughs> Well, and his, his parents don't have to worry about him being loud, you know what I mean? <laughs> yeah, yeah. yeah they, wait, don't, they don't even know he still lives there. Yeah. Do, wait, do you fuck this quietly, too? I don't fuck. <laughs> okay. Let's get this guy laid. A lot of comedians kill themselves. This is the rare comedian that makes everyone else want to kill themselves. This is incredible. <laughs> I mean, even the guy that spent 52 seconds talking about masturbating, we found out in the last eight seconds, he's fucking. Yeah. It's his own ass, but you know <laughs> yeah, what I mean? Exactly. <laughs> Corey, what do you mean you don't fuck? Let's talk about it. Well, I, I mean, as you could tell by my quiet, somber nature, I don't really hit it off with girls. Are, are you on any dating apps? Do you ever go out? Do you ever try? Do you... No. What do you mean, no? No to it all. When's the last time you kissed a girl? And did you like it? <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> Thank you so much, Skyfest. <laughs> yes, but it was a pity kiss, so no, I didn't like it. It was a what? Wait, have you... It was a pity kiss. When Are... was this? It was, like... it was by, like, a girl I used to talk to, like, in high school, like... Two or three years ago. What, what is going on with are you, you a, right are you, a, are you a virgin? It's been that fucking long. I might as well be a virgin, yeah. Uh. How long has it been since you had sex with a girl? Tell the truth. High school. I'm 32, yeah. Uh. Hey, that's okay. He's... Is there a woman out there that'll come up and give this yeah. guy a real kiss? Let's get I this mean, guy laid. It's been yeah. since fucking high school. Yeah. This is Skankfest. No. I like to make dreams come true. Let's he do seems it. like a good guy. He seems clean. He seems well manicured. Anybody. There has to be one girl out there. Sorry, Ty. No boys. There has to be one girl out there that's willing to come up here. We need a hero. Come Will on. somebody shove their tongue down this guy's throat real come quick? On. Maybe Ty Rivera come would on. wreck him. There has to be one badass chick out there that's willing to make this whole crowd go crazy right now. We literally have the world's saddest comedian here. Yes! Yes! Hold on a second. Yes. What is this? Yes. I'm hearing the crowd pop a little bit. What's happening? <laughs> Run! Yo! Yes, oh! <laughs> yes! Yeah! That's what the fuck I'm talking about. Yeah. <laughs> okay, okay, okay. Did you like it? <laughs> <laughs> Look yes. at him. Look how fucking happy yeah. he is right now. Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! Holy shit! The big buck. <laughs> Corey, your entire demeanor has changed. I bet you're even louder yeah. now, aren't you? Probably not, but... Oh, jeez. I really <laughs> set him up. I'm, I'm, even... I'm going to be honest. I just jizzed in my pants, man. <laughs> Yeah, are you trying to stay still so your boner doesn't show right now? Is that, I have a witness. I feel, like, I feel like you're all like, oh shit, oh, calm down, calm down. Wow. It's all new to me. I don't know what I feel anymore. <laughs> that was a pretty fucking little thick, tattooed, hot chick. How did that make you yeah. feel? Tell us. Describe well, what you feel on the insides, Corey. I feel... <laughs> I feel... I feel... Fulfilled. <laughs> Corey Duga just made his Kill Tony debut. It's his first time on stage. Hey. Eric says you get a big joke bug. You gotta you get, get a big, big bug, joke man. You gotta get These a big These are all bug. made by the great Bonesai. Wow. What was that Incredible. girl's name, man? Give it up for the girl that came Yeah, on, what right? was the girl's name? You got it? Jess? J-E-S-S? -S? How loud can this place get for Jess right now, huh? Yeah. That's what the fuck I'm talking about.
Wow. People that get it. They that was amazing. You. you know, Jess, I haven't gotten a blowjob since high school. And we're not surprised, <laughs> motherfucker. So there you go. Incredible. We've had, back to the bucket we go, we've had somebody who's done it 12 times in 15 years. We've had someone that has done it one time ever. How about one more time for the quiet Latino Corey Duga? A lot of newbies here tonight. And, well, 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 will you look at this? Ladies and gentlemen, this is not a newbie whatsoever. This man is one of my favorite comedians on planet Earth. Here to work out a new minute of material. Make some noise for Ari Shafir, everybody. What the fuck? Holy shit. Oh my God. It's really him. Oh my God. Live in the flesh. Make some noise for Ari Shafir. Thanks. Do I just start? How do I do this? Okay. <laughs> hey, uh, I don't know if you guys ever uh, adopted a dog, but uh, I'll talk about you, Ian. Uh, they always show the the backstory of these dogs you, that you adopt from the shelters. They always tell you about the fucking origin stories. They're always like, you know, he was beaten every day. Uh, he was left for dead on the side of the road, and then somebody found him and kicked the shit out of him every day for the last three years. Please, please adopt Sparks. <laughs> Here's my question. How do they know that? <laughs> who's, who's dropping off the dog? <laughs> I go like, hey, I, I just don't have time to beat the shit out of this dog anymore, but... I, I, I did beat the shit out of him every single fucking day. I mean, I, but my fists are so fucking bruised up from punching this dog in her fucking bitch face. I just can't do it anymore, so I'm, I'm hoping you guys find some other home for this dog to get the shit beat out of him. And they're like, we're going to find it a good home. I'm like, well, that's not what I wanted at all. Well, you do whatever you want. His name is Sparks, and he's a bad fucking dog. It's, it's, never, it's never anything real. It's never like, uh, oh, we had a kid, and he was allergic, so... You know, take the dog. They're, they're preying on your sympathy, you know? That was like, uh, we spit in his eye every fucking Thursday. Someone held his eye open and just fucking hocked a, a fucking one of those juicy fucking thick loogies right into his fucking eye. The dog would whimper and that just made him spit even harder. Please, would someone adopt Callie? This is a wonderful dog. Someone should adopt it. You cannot have keys and children in the same room around this dog. It will attack one of those two things. But he does need a good home. <laughs> I'm just wondering. It's never like, I don't know, we found him on the road. He's a cute dog. He knows how to sit already. Am I done with my minute? How long? <laughs> oh, yeah, I didn't hear that meow. You're okay. such a professional. You accidentally did two minutes and 15 seconds. Uh, sorry. You fucking... Wow! I was waiting for that meow. I was fucking extending there. It was right? quiet. You were getting big laughs. A rare treat when someone gets laughed so hard that they can't hear the meow. Oh, did I hear? It wasn't. Did you do it? Oh, yeah, fuck. you're, Sorry, you're really good at this. I, the dog overcame the meow. It canceled out. <laughs> I love it. How about another hand for the great Ari Shafir, huh? Ari. Ari here, working out a minute. I think maybe, you know, I mean, that's great. There's nothing for me to make fun of. I could call you a Jew a thousand different ways. Uh, why don't you tell these people, because this is a show about stand-up, like, how do you come up with material? Do you sit down and, like, sit at a desk with a piece of paper? Do you wait until you see real-life stuff and then start a premise? Do you write on stage? Yeah, that's a good note. Well, I learned from my, you know, my mentors when I started at the comedy store. I saw a lot of really great comics doing it. So, um, I, so what I do is I sit in the back of the room with a with a notebook, uh, like my mentor Carlos Mencia, and I just write down like, everything these comics have said. And I found it's an endless source of material that just never stops giving, and it's really worked out for me over the years. So, all these young comics, take note. 
the next comic's gonna come up here and talk about <laughs> rescue dogs. <laughs> I love it, Ari. Dude, I haven't wanted to do a one minute on this podcast since the fucking beginning. Since it's in the belly room with fucking Iron Man up there. Crazy, right? I kept thinking to put my name in there, so finally. Yeah. No, I love it, and it's been almost ten years since then. And uh, damn, I've liked you for four of those. <laughs> I love it. Uh, Ari, what else is going on in the world? Anything else you want to talk about to these people or any... I just got here today. You have any fucking insight on the festival? Las board? Vegas? Oh, well, there's some lovely people out on Fremont Street. Yeah. Uh, it's a beautiful place. Yeah, beautiful I saw people. the oddest-looking, fat, old Superman that I've ever seen before in my life out there. Here's a fun story. Uh, we filmed Big J uh, Okerson's special oh, right over there yesterday. Awesome. And I, no, don't clap, he's a bad person. But afterwards, uh, we were going out to do some pickup shots out in Vegas with the lights behind us. We had this cool uh, camera with his lights. And like dip. So we were walking behind where Jelly Roll would play, uh, just it, near that area, and some fucking hick just goes, are you Jelly Roll? To Jay Okerson. <laughs> and he goes, no, I'm not Jelly Roll. <laughs> and, and they're like, come on, you're being modest. They for sure thought Big Jay Okerson was Jelly Roll. <laughs> And was just hanging out somewhere in the audience before he goes up. <sighs> Jelly Roll's fucking lame cousin, Jam Bun. Ladies and gentlemen, joining the panel, what I believe is the greatest comedian on planet yeah. Earth. The number one, my favorite comedian in the world. Thank you. Wow. The, uh, the demeaning music didn't really uh, help, but uh, <laughs> where were you already? So something happened with a camera? Oh, yeah, me and Jay were out taking pictures on uh, <laughs> Judgment Dave. <laughs> Tony, thank you for letting me once again be a part of your traveling Ponzi scheme. <laughs> will, you, will you take people's dreams and turn them into crypto cash? I don't know how you do it. That's true. They just keep signing up it. for it. It's amazing. I'm very, very lucky. I'm honored that you would join us, Dave. Thank you so much for coming and hey, hanging thanks out for with having us. Me. We're gonna go through the bucket. We just found this brand new comedian. He goes by the name of Ari Shafir. Oh, I'm it's sorry. been a dream of mine to go up here and have David Tell on the panel, including these four also rounds. Is really a fucking <laughs> wonderful moment for me. Uh, Ari and I got to hang out with Roger Waters uh, last Thursday until like 6 in the morning. It was absolutely <laughs> insane. The creative force behind Pink Floyd, who's been performing in football stadiums for over 50 years and famously doesn't hang out with anyone, hung out with us. And at one point, uh, we were talking about, how do I put this, the Israel-Palestine conflict. <laughs> and I said, yeah, really, really scary people over there. Anybody that looks like this, <laughs> you got to be careful around. And we all laughed. And then Roger goes, that's not funny. <laughs> I like... <laughs> Ari, lo Ari looks like... If they held the Holocaust in a skate park. He... <laughs> <laughs> if, if Nordstrom's had ovens, that's what I... <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, Making his Kill Tony debut. There goes Ari Shafir, everybody. Make some noise for him. Thank you, Ari. What an honor. My new special is out November 2nd, I think. Ari Shafir Jew, available only on YouTube. Have a yeah, good night, everybody. Thank you for letting me movie. Ari. We will all watch it. There he goes. Should we go back to this bucket, huh? Actually, I pulled a name out and said Ari's name, so we'll go with this person that I pulled out a second ago. Uh, make some noise for your next comedian, Jeremiah Willis, everybody. Gator! Jeremiah Willis Gator, it says. Let's see what happens here. Here we go, Jeremiah Willis Gator. Oh, hell yeah, here he is, everybody. Make some noise. Jeremiah Willis Gator. How y'all doing? 
So I like older women cougars. I like them because they get straight to the point, especially when they come down to sex. They don't have no time to play games. I was messing with this older lady, and she used to smoke, which I don't like women that smoke, so I said, fuck it. You know, I forgot the joke, but I'm going to keep going. <laughs> but anyway, uh, one night I was headed over there to go see what that mouth do, and uh, she said, let me finish the cigarette, baby, and I got you. I don't know if anybody in here ever got hair from somebody that just got finished from smoking a menthol cigarette. But that shit is quite refreshing. I felt like I stuck my dick into a York peppermint patty or some shit. That shit happened over 20 years ago and I still get chills. Wow, look at that. Ari built some fucking momentum here, huh? Jeremiah Willis Gator, uh, welcome to the show, my friend. How long you been on stand-up? About a year and seven months. Where at? Uh, mainly in Vegas, uh, on Main Street, Wise Guys. Okay. Yeah, yeah, I met you there before, too. Absolutely, I love that club. I perform there, it is great. Small, low ceilings, fucking fun stuff. So a year and a half, what do you, how do you make a living? Uh, I'm a truck driver for Pepsi. Really? A truck driver for Pepsi? Thank you for your service. <laughs> <laughs> How long have you been driving trucks for Pepsi for? Probably about three months now. Okay. What, specifically Pepsi or just all Pepsi products? Uh, little Sierra Mist in there? Yeah, all that shit. Okay. <laughs> Put it in the stores and that's it. You have a personal favorite? Like for as what? Pepsi products? Nah, I don't drink Pepsi. That shit is disgusting. Okie dokie. Uh... <laughs> oh, wow. All right, we're getting word. Jeremiah just got fired from his job. Uh, this is... What'd you do before that? You said three months. What was the other time? Played uh... steel drums on Fremont Street? <laughs> nah, man. Selling coke. You got all your racial jokes ready, huh? Get the... <laughs> Selling coke. Look at this. This guy I'm loves lying, man. I'm cola lying. products. <laughs> You're from Vegas, born and raised? No, I'm from New Orleans. Okay. How'd you end up out here? Uh, just wanted a different change of scenery, you know. Okay. And you've been here like a year and a half, two years? Uh, coming up on four years. Okay. Hey, you know, it's a comedy show, not a parole hearing. All right? Give the guy, <laughs> give the guy a break. He lives here. He's got a job. He wants to be a comic. All right? <laughs> What's the fucking... Dave, I, what's that? I have to... What's the Senate hearing here? That <laughs> wants to make it. <laughs> right, right, right. I, <laughs> I have to interview them to get information from them, Dave. <laughs> I love it. Jeremiah, uh, your family's all back in New Orleans. You have a girlfriend out here? Yeah, I do. Okay, where'd you meet her at? In New Orleans. In New Orleans, and you brought her with you. Yeah, I should have left her though. But... What makes you say that? Why should you have left her there? I just should have, man. A lot more women in Vegas. You still have an active sex life with her? Yeah. I get in them guts pretty often, man, so... Well, that's a winning endorsement. <laughs> <laughs> Sounds like it used to be good. Sounds like you're got that Hurricane Katrina pussy going on over there, right? It was once soaking wet, now it's all dried up and empty. Nah, it's, it's pretty wet, man. Right. <laughs> there you go. I like you. How wet is it? Everything you say is funny. You just have a funny, like, even when you were doing your set, you forgot your joke, you kept talking. I, was, I thought that was great. Thank you, man. I appreciate yeah. it, man. Yeah, yeah, for sure. For sure, man. Just naturally, you're very, very funny. I love it. Indeed. Thank you. Not only does he drive the Pepsi, he also runs the jewels. <laughs> you have any other special skills or talents? Uh, I'm a failed rapper. And, uh, really? Aww. Can you give us a little freestyle? We, now that you've looked, you've set the bar pretty low. Perhaps we could just get a couple lines here. Eric Griffin pretending like he's blacker than he actually is. I know, right? <laughs> my, my mom beatbox is better than this. <laughs> Doing the old light-skinned yeah. beatbox. Here. Yeah, old 80s style. <laughs> 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 
Thank you, Dave. Yeah, hit it, Dave. Hit it. You got one lyric for us? Dog, I got guns that'll crack your back. First nigga in the hood to sell fat-free crack. Nick. Okay. All right, short and sweet. Was that his rap name? Was short that a rap sweet. song or just your to-do list? <laughs> <laughs> oh man! <laughs> oh my goodness! Oh, even though they're shutting me out, the mic. I think. Can we? Can, who's working the sound great. here? Who, okay, yes. Hello. Thank you so much. How about a hand for the amazing staff here at Skankfest, everybody? We're working no. it out, switching batteries, doing it. You're doing a good job, buddy. Hell yeah. All right. <laughs> There you go. The first comedian also works sound here, everybody. Very good. Uh, Great. Jeremiah, anything else crazy we need to know about your life before I let you go? Not nothing. Uh, it's a boring, regular life, man. But uh, I do have a partner I wanted to tell you about. He's your friend, too. A partner? Yeah, that's how I actually met you was through him. Uh-huh. And I don't really want name drop, so I'm going to just say DL, man. DL? The infamous DL. The infamous... DL. David Lucas. David that's Lucas. Okay, okay. Yes. So you're friends with David Lucas. Yeah, that's my boy. Okay. How do you know David? You guys uh, met we at actually a... met during a pandemic roasting and shit. You know everything was online. Yep. Roasted online with him and we just been cool ever since, man. What did you say to him? What did you call him? Uh I just told him you look like he used to be retarded and uh Beautiful. Well written, my friend. Yes. This guy this guy's great. I love him. Doesn't get much better than that. <laughs> Jeremiah Will why do they call you Gator before I let you go? Because it uh, says Jeremiah Willis, and then in parentheses it says Gator. An older, uh, older dude gave me that name. He told me I was mean like an alligator. So it, it, Okay. Yeah, nothing too complicated. You sure he didn't spell it G-A-Y? <laughs> <laughs> Funny, funny. <laughs> Jeremiah Willis, thank you so much for signing up. All right, thank yeah, you for coming good. on this show. Jeremiah, take one of these. Yo. Jeremiah Willis Gator, everybody. There he goes. That was great. That All was right, great. back to the bucket we go here. Back to the bucket. Make some noise for... Wow, we know this young man. He lives in Austin, Texas. He moved there recently after spending his entire life in South Carolina. Works the door at Vulcan. Ladies and gentlemen, Yonder Wizard is here. <laughs> Wow. You know what the difference is between a crocodile and an allegation? <laughs> Crocodiles are real. <laughs> knock, knock. Who's there? Hello, sir. I just moved into the neighborhood. I'm required by law to make my presence known. <laughs> if you wouldn't mind signing this form so that I could return it to the courthouse tomorrow by noon, I'd greatly appreciate it. I noticed a swing set in the backyard. <laughs> Unrelated. <laughs> so I was a pretty big Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles fan as a kid. You guys fuck with the turtles? <laughs> I was also a pretty big Bill Cosby fan as a kid, so I'm definitely afraid I'm going to wake up one day to find out that the Ninja Turtles raped 54 women. Absolutely, exactly one minute. Yonder, coming in, showing how it's done. Beautiful set. I really like that Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles <laughs> joke. Thank you, Tony. I, absolutely. I had some friends that were, you know, when I started, some diehard Bill Cosby fans, and it was very fun to make fun of them when, uh, when uh, the old uh, <laughs> you know, uh, rape, uh, multiple rape thing happened. Yeah, that, that kind of put a damper on the whole thing. Yeah. Yeah, a damper. <laughs> what a bummer that was. So, so 54, it's a bummer. Yeah. 53, maybe, but 54, man, that's... <laughs> Come on, dude. What are you doing with your life? Yonder Wizard, you are a big, beautiful man. Thank you, have Tony. You, have you always looked like this? No, actually, uh, I used to do P90X and shit and eat... 
fucking chicken breasts and egg whites. What the fuck happened? Fucking, I got tired. Of <laughs> yeah, we fuck better, that, dude. Better like, warn this guy in the front row. This is the ghost of Christmas future for you right here. <laughs> yeah, dude. No. P90XXXL. <laughs> <laughs> I like you. You have like a Mitch Hedberg vibe to you. Oh, thanks, man. Yeah. I like the one-liners. If you don't like this one, here's another one. No, no, no. I mean, like, the one-liner process oh. of, like, if you don't like this oh, one. Oh, yeah. No, no, no. I take it back. Um. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> I love it. Yonder, tell us something about you that we don't know. You've been on the show in Austin, Texas a few times. Tell these people here it's Gang Fest, a fun fact about you. Um... I, I, I uh, died three times when I was eight years old after falling off the back of a moving vehicle. What was the vehicle's name? Heroin? Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I fell off the back of the heroin truck. How did this happen? How did you fall off the back of a vehicle? Selling world's finest chocolate. Fuck world's finest chocolate. But uh, I was selling that. I was walking to the house that's... Uh, farthest from mine and I was a fat kid and my aunt was like hey jump on the back of the car it was a car it was on a trunk and I just fell off and had a aneurysm so I've had brain surgery that would explain it and I died three times in the ambulance on the way to the hospital wow yeah wow. that's incredible do you remember that did you see anything did you see what did you see I don't remember. I remember going to sell the chocolate, and then I remember waking up in the hospital a few days later. I was in a coma for a few days. Okay. All right. Not wow. the most riveting uh, content, I wow. realize. Uh, you, you died as a child, and now you're dying up here as an adult. <laughs> yeah. And then fucking Hagrid died on my birthday Friday. <laughs> really? Yeah. That's incredible. What, is that your hero? Is that... Well... I, I didn't look like this until I saw Harry Potter, but it's unrelated. I just I cut my own hair. And now I'm lazy. that's all I see is Hagrid. I know. Yeah. Eric, what are you doing here? <laughs> You're a wizard, Ian. <laughs> I read. I love it. You're very cuddly. <laughs> I like it. Thank you. Yonder, what else about you? We've talked with you quite a bit. I'm trying to figure it out. Other than dying, what about your? What's the weirdest thing in your refrigerator right now? A head. Uh, <laughs> uh, I eat. I eat like strictly uh, hot dogs. I microwave H E B hot dogs and uh, eat them wiener only with ketchup. Wow. wow, I am hard as a rock right now. <laughs> I don't yeah. know about you guys, but Are those quarter pound H E B wieners. How many hot dogs do you eat a day? Four at a time. Probably, probably, I don't know, it depends. Eight to 12 if I'm hitting it hard. You know, if I don't do the water burger or the P. Terry's. If you, so how do you do that with your feet? Or yes. <laughs> I'm, a, I'm, I'm limber for my size. I like it. You know, that, that yeah. is a lot. <laughs> can I say something? Uh, yeah. Tony, are you good? Yeah. Your jokes were so strong, buddy. Thank you so much. Now, I assume that you, before you tell them to the crowd, you tell them to a skeleton that was your mother. Is yes. that true or not? Yeah. <laughs> I do. Go ahead. What else does he eat? What's your, in, in your refrigerator? Was it the dating game in the 70s? <laughs> Did they ask that back then? I don't know. If you could be any style of shoe, what would you be? Oh, man, Brogan. <laughs> Let me ask you something. You and the black guy, you drove a truck cross-country, right? We did. I, he drove, I drank the Pepsi. I love it. Now, you're in town. What are you going to do? When I'm who? I see you selling guns in a hotel room. Oh, yeah. I'm, uh, I got a room at the Mandalay. <laughs> Ooh, <wow. laughs> yeah! I see you. I see you gently laying guns out on a bed. <laughs> I call this one Samantha. <laughs> Literally triggered. Buddy, your jokes are good. Oh, you no, just ruined good. that hole. <laughs> it was a roll going. Come on, man. I'm sorry. <laughs> I don't know my own strength. I've been eating fucking edibles, dude. I don't do shit. I'm sober. I'm fucking boring. God bless. I don't You're do not... anything but smoke weed, and, and I've eaten a lot of fucking edibles this weekend. I don't know what to tell you. You're not sober if you're eating edibles. Well, you know what I mean. 
You put THC in hot dogs? Yes. He's Austin sober. Yeah. I'm Austin sober. That's cool. Well, no, I don't do coke. No, but you do do hot dogs. <laughs> Yonder, you came up here. You had a great set. You did exactly what people hope to do when they sign up for the show. You executed it perfectly. Yonder Wizard, Thanks, everybody. Guys. Great job, Yonder. We have a special treat for you guys right now. Uh, here to perform a new minute. You guys know that we've had regulars on this show absolutely forever. A lot of you may not have made it so far back into the bank of episodes of the show to know that your next comedian is one of the first ever regulars in the history of the show. She was performing brand new minutes every single week, nine and a half years ago. Now, she's a full-time comedian. Make some noise, a new minute from the great Sarah Weinshank. Yeah! What's up, Skate Fest? Oh yeah, I call it Shank Fest, baby. I don't know if you guys know this, but a lot of celebrities have fragrances. Billie Eilish has a fragrance. Beyonce has a fragrance. I started thinking, how come comedians don't have fragrances? And it's because we're not sexy enough. Like, no one wants to smell like Amy Schumer. <laughs> if Amy Schumer had a fragrance, it would smell like hot dogs and other people's jokes. If, if Joe Rogan had a fragrance, it would smell like elk and jalapenos. If Carlos Mencia had a fragrance, it would smell like elk and jalapenos. Johnny Depp has a fragrance called Savage, pronounced Savage. If Chris D'Elia had, had a fragrance, it would be called Underage. <laughs> if Louis C.K. had a fragrance, it wouldn't smell like anything. It just would squirt you in the eye. <laughs> Thank you. Sarah Weinshank, how cool. Her first appearance in years on the show. Absolutely amazing. I love it. How about one more time for Sarah, everybody? So cool. Sarah, tell us, how's life? Life is so good. I'm having so much fun. It's getting fast. Kim and I were just in New York. We just opened for Joey Diaz. It was so much fun. Nice. Yeah, we had a great time at Sony Hall. And uh, yeah, I have my podcast, This Bitch with Kim. And then I have my solo podcast, Shank. Yeah, you're yeah. fucking doing it. You're out there living the dream. You were on uh, Rogan's podcast, what, seven years in, ago? In 2014. 2014, yep. That's a yeah. fucking long time ago. A while ago. ago. Wow, yeah. incredible. So what else is going on? You live in L.A. or New York? Now? I live in L.A. Okay. I could tell sunglasses on yeah, stage. Yeah, sunglasses on yeah. stage. I got <laughs> earrings that say princess. You know who I am. An L.A. bitch. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Weinshank, you are Jewish. Yep. Um, how's life going for you? As a Jew? As anything, sure. Um, <laughs> what was that set up? I thought, <laughs> so you're I thought, a Jew. <laughs> I, thought, I thought when he said that, the crowd was going to turn around. Like, <laughs> <laughs> um, Set the code here. Life as a Jew is great, baby. Right. If I got, you... last Skank Fest, I got an 818 tattoo, but it was bad, so I covered it up because it looked like a Holocaust tattoo. Oh, no. And as a Jew, you can't be doing that. Right. No, 100%. We mm -hmm. were all very, very close with the great, late, great Brody Stevens. Mm -hmm. uh, yeah. Multiple time guests on the show, super friend of us, Valley. Yeah. Uh, legend, much like yourself. A one eight. Hashtag, you got it. There he is, right there. <laughs> there he is. The um, all right. Well, that's always a little bit sadder than I expected to be. <laughs> if you if that. you smelled like a fragrance, what would it be? Wine stank. <laughs> What's that? Interesting. I think it would be like weed and something woodsy. Holla bread. Yeah, weed and holla. Cash. Weed and latkes? Yes. Coins? 
Coins. <laughs> I love it. Wine Shank, you're absolutely uh, doing it. I cannot explain to you how cool I think it is that you, Kim, uh, Allie, everybody's just working all the time, doing their podcasts, making a living in the business. We watched you guys all grow up. So fucking cool. Amazing minute. Love it. Very on theme. Comedy festival. Comedy jokes. Fucking amazing. Sarah Weinshank, everybody. Yeah. Legendary. Those girls were doing new minutes every single week, which is a scary job for anybody to do. And uh, it's fucking legendary shit. How about one more time for Sarah, huh? All right, back to the bucket we go. Your next comedian, this guy's also from Austin, Texas. We know him well. Make some noise for Mike Eaton, everybody. A new minute from Mike Eaton. Mike Eaton. Here he comes, everyone. One more time for Mike, everybody. 60 seconds uninterrupted for Mike Eaton. Hello. I got to throat fuck. Pretty cool. I've been waiting a long time. I'm not particularly well endowed. I have a small penis, but I am funny. You don't get both. <laughs> uh, but I was visiting my grandma at the Alzheimer's unit, uh, and everyone there was born in the 20s and 30s. I don't know how much you know about the Great Depression, but they weren't making this model yet. <laughs> Didn't have the food for it. You see a fat guy back then, you gotta get him. <laughs> so I'd go see her, and a bunch of ladies would get wet for the first time in 40 years. <laughs> I got a hard candy and a soft mouth. <laughs> uh, and I found a lady there who had installed an access port with 50 years of cigarettes right here. Let me get that dick. <laughs> so I throat fucked. It was pretty cool. <laughs> you guys cheered for that. Don't you feel bad? <laughs> I came. It came out of her nose. <laughs> it's like, let's get a tissue out of your purse, Nana. <laughs> I'm trying to say, if you don't answer your grandparents' texts, I'm going to fuck them. <laughs> That's me. Thanks. <laughs> wow. Good Mike stuff. Eaton. Yeah. That's good stuff. Uh, Hello? Yeah. Hello. <laughs> What's up, buddy? How are you? Wonderful. How are you today? Is it hard doing comedy and parking cars at Astroland? <laughs> <laughs> uh, what do you yeah. do during the day, buddy? Uh, eat. Eat? <laughs> yeah. I see you as a children's clown in a hospice. Are you? You've got a great oh, You're energy. on your way out, Hong Kong. Yeah. You've got a great energy. Oh. That, why a hospice? The kids are going to die? <laughs> yeah, that's the joke. It's a nice of it. way out. I'll bring up a donut. I this love it. Be, <laughs> Did you really fuck a hole in a woman's throat? Yeah. No. Oh. No. We well, all look like you would. I yeah, know. for sure. That'd be cool. I could easily see you going from the cake to the trach. You know what I'm saying? <laughs> it's so well played. You have a great energy. And the crowd picked up on it right away. What keeps you going, buddy? I want to know what it is. Uh, just, it's the most exciting thing in the world. Like, Skate Fest has been the coolest experience. Really? I got to drug a white claw out of a guy's prosthetic leg yesterday. No way. Really? Yeah, that's real. Really? Or is this like the time you told us that you fucked a tree? <laughs> this oh. is after the meow. It's real. Where is he's get, here. I, I got a thumbs up from Yoni. He actually drank white claw out yeah. of Whoa. somebody's what? His Ew. prosthetic leg. Did it smell? It did. <laughs> oh, now we're talking. It did. This but, white claw smells like a white thigh. <laughs> Gangrene, the ultimate plum in comedy. <laughs> The old belly button of the leg. Yeah. What did it smell like? What did it taste like? Um, have you ever cleaned your belly button? Oh, man. Sure. That. <laughs> uh, unlike you, Mike, when I clean my belly button, I don't taste what <laughs> comes out of it afterwards. You never find snacks in there? No. Uh, okay. Oh, <laughs> Mike. I think you and I have two different sized belly buttons. Yeah. If you know what I'm saying. For sure. Yeah, I can fit like a car key in mine. <laughs> Not bad. Well, I think it's deep enough to do... <laughs> <laughs> oh yeah, I don't think anyone could fuck it. That would be sad for them. Mike, how long have you been doing stand-up? Uh, a little over four years. And how do you make money to be able to survive? Uh, I sell shit with logos on it. What? So, uh, yeah, it's very boring. That's why I don't bring it up. I, no, I thought old people, they need like bags and shirts and shit to promote their businesses, and I sell it to them. 
Yep. Have you ever thought about your, you seem like a guy that specializes in marketing. Now that you've drank out of someone's prosthetic <laughs> leg, have you thought about perhaps making that a beverage? Like brand yeah. new state yeah, of the art boot, but drink called like Amputee or something like that? <laughs> I don't fuck it. Okay. I thought that was better we than We could make it an edible. That. It'd be like knee HC. I don't know. Get high on it. We had? All right. That sucked. Okay. <laughs> uh-huh. All right, Mike Eaton. So, uh, love life. Let's talk about it. You have a girlfriend? I'm divorced. Okay. Yeah. When did you get divorced? Like two months ago. Two Whoa. months ago. So this yeah. is a fresh <laughs> divorce. Wow. Congrats. Yeah. And you're still smiling like that? I can't I believe know. it. I know. I'm pretty hot. Did, did you leave her? Did she leave you? Come uh, on. Was... That's a really insulting. No. Yeah. <laughs> what? I'm asking. <laughs> I'm more of a stationary guy. She did the leaving. Yeah, I think. <laughs> No, we, we decided um, she didn't want to be second place to comedy, and I didn't want to sacrifice passion. So I wanted, I wanted to keep doing this. If mm. you're going to make me choose between comedy and you, I'm going to pick comedy because I pick me. Right. Wow. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. Wow. Well, that's your side of it. <laughs> yeah. Um, yeah. Let's bring her like, out. <laughs> her side of things is uh, I have a small dick, so you know, you're right. Like, ah. Oh, yeah, well, her. you showed her. You're out here drinking white claw out of a guy's <laughs> amputated leg. Yeah. Meanwhile, Who's... she's guzzling cum out of a black cock somewhere. So. I hope she is. She deserves it. <laughs> mm. <laughs> very good. There you go, buddy. <laughs> so how long were you married for? A year and a half. A mm. year Ooh. and one. We, we met during the pandemic. I uh, did a bunch of drugs and got married 64 days after we met. Cute. And yeah. Then, and so then, it was like, yeah, love. And then later it was like, oh, no. <laughs> yeah. Oops. <laughs> so then you got divorced. Have you been with somebody sexually since the divorce two months ago? No, I'm waiting for, like, the paperwork to be done just to be respectful. Sure. Jeez. Oh, well, that's the reason. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, good one. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> saying she's drinking cum out of a black dick. I want to be respectful. Drinking yeah. <laughs> soda. Yeah, I hate to disrespect. Don't, don't be disrespectful to my old bitch. <laughs> <laughs> wow. Uh, so when you uh, do do something, what are, what are you in the market for? What type of uh, what what do you think you're looking for here? Anything that will fuck you or like? Is yeah, there that specific, sounds right. Is there a specific shape or size that you're into? Is there like a weird quirk that you have with women? Anything specific? I like dumb tattoos. Ooh. I think dumb tattoos are hot on ladies. Oh shit! Oh, wow! wow. Look at that. <laughs> hey, hey. <laughs> she shook her head so fast. Yeah, because That's so I made eye contact with it. You said dumb tattoos, and she yeah, made a lot pointed. of life choices right here. <laughs> Come on, lady. You don't want to fuck John Wayne Gacy's grandson? <laughs> That's incredible. John Wayne Macy's Day Parade blimp? <laughs> there it is. <laughs> That's, so That's why he's the guest of the year, rookie That's of the so year, 2022. Oh. Incredible. Uh... Mike Eaton, a great set. I absolutely loved it. I love that uh, some Austin people are coming up here and uh, really uh, showing how it's done. Great stuff. You did it again. Thank you guys. Welcome to Skankfest. We'll see you back home. That Thank is you. Mike Eaton. Buddy, we'll see you later at the Denny's. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I got to go, Tony. Thanks for having me, buddy. Dana I appreciate has, it. Dana the Kill Tony fans are the ultimate fans. Thank you, Dave. Guys, I'll see you again. Be please, safe. Please, for the love of God, this is the best comedian on planet Earth right now. Make some fucking noise for Dave Attell. Goddamn. Look at that. Touched by an angel. The great Dave Attell. Your next comedian goes by the name of Keith Bergeron, everybody. Keith Bergeron, straight out of the bucket. Keeping it moving along. Anything can happen. Could be his first time. Might be his 5,000 set. Here he is, everybody. One more time for Keith Bergeron, everybody. First of all, I'm a Pepsi addict. I have the tattoo to prove it. So fuck you earlier. Just saying. Um... So gravity's funny, right? As we get older, our tits sag, our ears get bigger, our nose gets bigger, 
Like everything just seems to go down. Except their dicks, right? Our dicks fucking don't get any bigger. Never, ever. It's like a cruel joke, like God's a woman. <laughs> but if God was a woman, would she let those big titties bounce off her knees as she's walking? Probably not. So uh, I played pool a uh, lot. Uh, had some friends at my house the other day. And uh, smoking in my car. Smoking with a friend. Go ahead, Thank finish you. it. I'll take Smoking with a friend. I pass it to him. He's in my passenger seat. And I happened to look in my side mirror. And another kid had come upstairs. And he was taking a piss. And his dick was like seven inches soft. And I was just like, uh, 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 what the fuck? So uh, he's called 9.5 now. He's on my pool team. It says... All right, yeah, we got to cut you off. There. <laughs> you got up to a minute 30. I tried to stretch it out for you. but Hey, man, I I've heard it said before, but comedians are the modern-day philosophers. <laughs> <laughs> Grab that microphone. He's already got his backpack. This guy's hoping we just do a catch-and-release here right now. No, honestly, yeah. You have to come up here and take your medicine, my little friend. I just want to make sure that I'm ready to leave so you guys can keep going with the show. Maybe I have so people. many questions for yeah, you. Stop talking yeah. right now, Keith. First Fuck of all, it. every time you start talking, your eyes start to shut. Why okay. is that? That's because I got the booster shot in January, <laughs> and you got <laughs> Bell's palsy. Woo! Bell's palsy on the left side, it so is. it's coming back. Like I can smile, <laughs> I can lift like my eyebrows, kind of. <laughs> so it's getting better. I'm doing my exercises, motherfucker. You should have done this for your minute. People from Texas love this type of material. That was hilarious. We Wait, love just watching it. What do you mean? Everything's okay. Hey, well, I mean, COVID ravished my body and woke up an autoimmune disease that I didn't know I had. Really? So you and got original COVID first? When, yeah. when, when was that? In like December, December 2019. 2021. Well, 2019, no. Jesus, yes. that, you were the first one. Were you in Wuhan? Yes, I was fucking in Wuhan. I fucking was like, hey, bat might be good. What the fuck? Right? Oh, tell the truth. What was the <laughs> autoimmune disease? It's called IgG4. And what it does is it... Jesus, that's it, my Yahoo password. No, so uh, <laughs> your, your lungs and your heart have a protective layer around them. And that's where I build fluid. So if I overextend myself... I build fluid. What happened was it crushed my lung, my left lung, 50%. That's why I'm getting out of breath right now. Oh, my God. Um, I had to have surgery March 3rd. <laughs> and they went through my back. And they cracked my fucking ribs. And they drained something? Or? And, well, no. They, well, they drained me first. Uh -huh. But then because it had been there so long, the fluid, there was scar tissue still pinning the lung in. Oh my god. So they had to break my ribs and cut all that scar tissue out. And this was from COVID? Or when did you get the booster? Okay, my surgery was March 3rd. Uh huh. Right? March 15th was when it was released to the general public. Uh huh. Yeah. So I got my first two shots. My doctors are like, dude, you're severely autoimmune disease. Take everything, like, do everything. Yeah, the doctors. So. Yeah, yeah trust them, I, absolutely. I Why literally held out a long time mm -hmm. for the booster. Yeah. And then finally it was like, okay, guys, fuck it, I'll do it. And I did it, and two days later, my whole face fell off. So let me ask Well, you half this. of my face fell off, I'm sorry. Oh, my God. God. Wow. Oh, look Shit. at that. that well, is, this is also... real life, people. <laughs> this is what CNN does not want you to see right here. <laughs> two days later, I mean, what the fuck? Hey, I'm on this stage because of this man right now. Because of Ian? Yeah, I said I was, too, I was too sick to come here. I was like, I don't think I could do it. Yeah. And he was like, why can't you? And I was like, why the fuck can't I? Uh, and I, I love waited. that. Yeah. I absolutely love Ian that. Ian Finance. Ian My Pot fucking man. Ian. Oh, Jordan Jensen. It's your fault. I know. Ian, that Amen. is so nice of you to invite the Iceman, Chuck Lydell, here. Uh, you're like a fat version. You're like Chuck yeah. Lydell. Yeah, thanks. <laughs> you're like the Ice Cream Man, Chuck Lydell. Hey, the 50 was after I got my surgery there. 
Uh-huh. You know, you should feel bad for this fucking... My abs don't work. I have to wear this shit. Oh. What? Because... From All right, the, man, don't say I'm the reason you're here. Fuck that. <laughs> All right, get me, get me the fuck off the stage so we can continue, right? No, are you, I, are you I not like, done yet? I like your style. I'm not fucking done yet. What do you do for a living? Um, well, I sit on my fucking ass. Right. I was getting paid by MetLife, uh-huh. and then two years later, they're like, okay, we're not going to pay you anymore. My doctors are like, get lawyers, so that's what I'm doing right now. Okay, what do you do for fun? Uh, I sell weed. Okay. Excellent yes. weed. All right, that's another Don't job. Listen. What do you do in, for fun? Like at I night? play pool. Oh, okay. I'm a billiards hustler. Oh. There's an eight ball. There's a ten ball. I, I hate it. nine ball, so there's a little tiny shitty one in here. Okay. Hell yeah. There's two little balls in your pants, too. That's incredible. <laughs> Stupid. Fucking asshole. <laughs> um, you weren't supposed to tell people, but whatever. All right. Well, uh... Fuck, I lost. Well, I'm glad you're here, man. Um, I will say this is my first time ever being on stage. How about a hand for him? Oh, no Keith, shit, that's right? great. Keith, how about it, man? Glad you took a risk and got down here, dude. How about it for Keith? Hey, there you go, buddy. Keith, here's a little joke book. Guys, his first time ever on stage, Ian encouraged him. He's out and about. Not easy to do. My goodness. Look at that. He yeah. Does. He got us all the half smile here tonight. You guys think we should go to this bucket one more time, huh? Yeah. All right, to the bucket we go. Holy shit, look at this guy. Did you sign up, sir? Hey, you. Oh, no, you're a security guard? Oh, okay, you didn't sign up, right? God, I would love to hear what this guy has to say. Look at this bucket. <laughs> this guy's got stories for days. Uh... What would you talk about if I forced you to do stand-up? What, but what would you talk? I'm not saying that I'm going to, but what would you talk about? Everything, Uh-oh. Mama? Oh, my God. See what I'm talking about? <laughs> All right. Your final bucket pull of the night perhaps goes by the name of Jake McCown, everybody. Jake McCown. Let's see what happens here. Oh, here he is. He's right here. Hey. Make some noise for Jake, everybody. How we doing, Skate Fest? Oh, you guys are a great crowd. I'll leave you on this. How you guys feel about abortion? I'm pretty pro-abortion, too. In fact, I have a kid, which may seem like I'm not pro-abortion, but this Halloween, we're dressing him up as a zombie, and we're taking him to Planned Parenthood, and we're letting him crawl in. I'm putting a phone in his shirt. I'm going to say, why did you kill me? (laughs) I just think some of you guys are a little bit too cavalier about it, that's all. Like, my friend Abby, she wrote in her Tinder profile, you have to be at least six feet tall to ride this ride, boys. I know that because I wrote it, because I'm her friend, I'm five foot eight. But I was like, Abby, why are you talking about your pussy like it's a roller coaster? You've killed way more kids inside you than any roller coaster ever has. <laughs> ah, yeah, that's the noise it makes when they vacuum out the kid of her, too. <laughs> oh. <laughs> wow. <Ooh>. Jake McCown. <laughs> I like your abortion chunk. <laughs> Jesus. <laughs> very, very interesting, Jake. How, how are you, first of all? I'm good. You're a stand-up comedian? I, I do too, comedy, yeah. Did you do the naked roast? I did, yes. Yeah. How long have you been doing stand-up? Off and on for about three years. Where at? Sacramento. Sacramento, oh. California. We know it very well. Punchline? I've done punchline. Right. You don't have many of them, but you perform there. Very good. Uh, what do you do for work? I own a coffee shop. A coffee shop? Yeah. Okay. What's it called? The Caffeinated Monkey. The what? The Caffeinated Monkey. The Caffeinated Monkey. Okay. All right. A little bit racial, huh? Move on. Let me guess. You serve a lot of black coffee? <laughs> No cream allowed at the monkey. Does the coffee machine not work often? <laughs> <laughs> and let me guess, it doesn't know its father. <laughs> Does the coffee machine make a lot of loud noises that no one wants to hear? Especially Wait. when movies are playing? <laughs> and do a lot of fat white girls come in? <laughs> 
Do they answer those questions? <laughs> oh, Jesus yeah. Christ. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I would have chosen that name. The caffeinated monkey. So how long have you been running a coffee joint? About a year. Okay. You have any specialties there? Like, do you do... Uh, Fried chicken. No, I'm joking, I'm joking. Uh, no. Hey, fuck Jeez. you, man. <laughs> what a racist. Cool. My God. How we, we, dare we, you? We, we, you you do it, it's shit. racist. You what fucking a, thumb. Yeah, fuck you. you. Sorry. I love it. I feel like you got like a speech thing. Is that true or, you know? No, nah, I was just nervous. I oh, guess. okay. Also, yeah. Are you high? That's about it. No. no. Not high. No. What do you do for fun? Uh, uh, I like shooting guns. Okay. Wow. What kind of guns do you have? Uh, AK, M16. Oh, my God. Okay. Yeah. All right. I love that. A couple that. Glocks. I love that. I don't know if you guys know this. My buddy old pal Chris D'Elia just got an AR-15. He swears it's an AR-18. <laughs> 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 I can't help myself. I don't know why I just did that joke right then on this yeah. show. Boo. <laughs> I love it. Um, so, what else? I'm trying to figure out. There must be something else interesting. you have any special skills or talents? Um, well, I'll, I'll tell you this. I used to, uh, in Iraq, I was like the secret service for the ambassador. I used to take him to, the, to his meetings in Iraq. Like, for the ambassador... Uh, to Iraq of America? Yeah. Okay. Hey, all right. That's oh, well, interesting. Well, How about thank you for your service. The, thank you. Armed services there. How long ago was that? <laughs> it, was, it was a couple couple of waist sizes ago. I was going to say. <laughs> so I was in the military 10 years ago, but that's private military. That was like four years ago. So. Uh-huh. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. What, what branch? I was in the Marine Corps. The Marine Corps. Okay. Yeah. Oh, Wow. Very you just really let yourself go. <laughs> you I did, yeah. You used to be able to do a bunch of push-ups and stuff. Pull-ups, push-ups, yeah, everything. Wow. And how about now? Nothing. Nothing. You know what? I, I, I have a discipline tattoo back when I was very good shape. <laughs> Let's see what it looks like now. I got to yeah, see. Oh, my oh, God. Wow. Looks exactly like the guy's bandage from the fucked up vaccine. <laughs> Or it's so big now, it looks like he stutters, you know? <laughs> <laughs> Discipline. Very, very interesting to see. Yeah. Does PTSD stand for pancakes, tacos, sauces, <laughs> and dip? <laughs> I'm not a doctor. <laughs> Stupid. How long were you in Iraq for? As a civilian, probably like three years. A civilian? Yeah, that's... Yeah, what, what would you do? Hang out afterwards? Yeah. The job of taking the ambassador to is where he needed to go. That was me as a civilian. Oh, shit. We thought you like were like, oh, you know what? Yeah. <laughs> the rent is cheap out here. Yeah. So, so can, you get, can you get security work like now for... Could you get hired to be security for like celebrities? And stuff? Oh, oh, well, I'm not big enough. I, but if you have a gun, you know, you don't have to be big enough. That's what we right. were. Oh. If you have gun and discipline, <laughs> you can do anything. I'm like David Goggins if he just discovered Chipotle. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> You're like David Blobbins. <laughs> <laughs> You're fat. <laughs> Stay soft. <laughs> A damn <ten> pizza hut. <laughs> Oh my god. Uh, I'm sorry, I'm sorry. I hate myself. I'm sorry. <laughs> We're having fun here. Uh, Jake, thank you so much for signing up. We love it. Thank you for your service. Of yeah, course. thank you for your service. Jake McCown. Here you go. Take one of these, my friend. Boom. Easy breezy. Uh, this is normally where the show would end, and according to the lineups here at Skankfest, this is exactly where the show should end. But, because I'm so wildly successful now, I paid for someone's airline ticket here, all the way from Boston, Massachusetts today, spent the entire week with this guy and Hans Kim. He absolutely tried to bury me with a shovel for 10 sold out shows. I'm telling you, this guy in his real comedy full-time sets 
is fucking one of the most dangerous fucking comedians in the world right now. Here to do a new minute that he wrote today. Ladies and gentlemen, this is indeed the Memphis Strangler, the Big Red Machine, the Vanilla Gorilla, William Montgomery! Happy Glocktober! First and foremost, I'm excited to be here at Skank Fest today. I think it's great they organized a festival in honor of Red Band's mom. Because she's a fucking whore! I hate that lady! I'm kidding. Incels be like, if Donald Trump wins the election, I swear I'm moving to Castlevania. <laughs> That's a good joke. That's a pretty good joke. <laughs> NASCAR driver Kurt Busch had to go to sensitivity training for calling another driver who tried to kill him a retard. I wonder what the sensitivity trainer said to him. So quit calling people a retard, you faggot. Reparations, not decorations. <laughs> I thought you said reparations, not decorations. <laughs> I don't know who that character is yet, but I'm working on it. I'm, I'm trying to find where she lives, honestly. I've been looking for this lady. Okay, that's right. That's right. Wow. Yeah. Wrote it. Today was not even on the Skankfest lineup. Yeah, why the fuck wasn't I on the lineup? Was not an official member of the lineup. Yeah, seriously, who's running this fucking thing? Why wasn't I fucking on the official lineup? Seriously, heads are gonna roll. This fucking guy, right here, we again, 10 fucking sold out insane shows out there. Every single major comedy club that we just did, literally the owner goes up to him, gets his fucking number, and makes a fucking deal with him right there on the spot to headline his own shit afterwards. This guy is literally, that is what comedians want in this world. You're hoping that a comedian takes you on the road with them, and then all of a sudden, every single owner goes straight up. I saw it every single time. The they problem is, I only have five minutes worth of material, so I... <laughs> <laughs> I'm not kidding. I mean, I have five minutes worth of material. I'm kidding, Tony. It was such a pleasure. It was wonderful. You're a fucking monster, William, and I'm watching him make these fucking adjustments night after night, show after show. If something doesn't, if something slows the momentum, he fucking gets rid of it and fills it in with something else the next night. He's doing absolutely everything right. Let me remind you that just two, three years ago, this guy was a drunken, coked up, fucking obese. Yeah! Sobriety! I can confirm that. <laughs> I look just like this guy. It's true. <laughs> it's true. God, get out of here, man. You're throwing me off. I swear to God. I've been watching your ass the whole fucking time. I don't know what it is, but something about you is really throwing me off. Maybe, Maybe it's the fact that he kind of looks like Red Band's mom. <laughs> I'm, sorry. <laughs> I'm sorry. She is so old. She is so nasty. <laughs> Like, I don't know if y'all have seen this lady. She is nasty. <laughs> William, Red Band is always so nice. I know. I feel so bad, Red Band. And we talked about this already. Huh? We did talk about it. Yeah, we did. Okay, we talked about it. So I went for it tonight. 
He literally told me to stop fucking make fun of, to stop making fun of his mom. He told me. William, is there anything you want to say to these people here, this audience that you weren't even supposed to be in front of tonight? I will be out front of White Castle for an hour after this. I brought 200 Xanax bars. He's selling Xanax I literally... tonight, everybody. That's the great William Montgomery right there. We did it again. Guys, please, for the love of God, make some noise for my guests. Eric Griffin and Ian Bidex. The great David Tell. Hans Kim. Ari Shafir. Sarah Weinshank. We're going to do it again, 9 p.m. tonight. I love you guys. Thank you. It's always so wild and fucking different doing these skank fest kill Tonys. It's got its own weird ass fucking little fucking judgy little dark vibe to it. I like it. We love you guys. That's why we come back every single skank fest to goof around. Thank you guys for coming out. We love you. Thanks, Good night, guys. everybody. Thank, Thank you guys so much. Thanks for the support. Thanks for the love. Check out their podcast, Eric Griffin, Riffin with Griffin, and Finance. Bye, guys. <laughs>